Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you're joining us from. Thanks for being with us today. Welcome to the QT World Summit 2021. I'm Ray Diaz from Panasonic Avionics, and I'm joined here today by Tuan Pham. And we'll be walking you through how Panasonic has used QT and its products to support the evolution of video and playback features over the years. We welcome your feedback and will be available in chat to answer any questions you may have. We'll start with how we used QT to support the video playback capabilities of some of our first video streaming products and see how these capabilities have progressed through the years. We'll cover some of the challenges we've had supporting 4K video using QT on Android and how we managed to address some of those issues. But first, let me talk about who we are. Panasonic's Avionics is the world leader in in-flight entertainment systems. We've been in the industry for four decades and have won numerous awards for our in-flight entertainment systems. Billions of people a year see and use our products while flying to their destinations. We are always looking to include new technologies and services in our products to enhance the in-flight experience. Here at Panasonic, we've been using QT in our products for 12 years, primarily to develop the main interactive GUIs that passengers engage with in their seats. Many customers want a unique passenger experience, and the QT QML language allows us to design and develop engaging experiences quickly. Through the, this GUI, passengers can browse duty-free catalogs, read digital books, play games, and view and listen to a large catalog of movies and albums. The QT framework also allows us to provide simple QML interfaces to the various peripherals passengers have access to, such as reading light controls, seat movements, and window shades. This combination of QML and QT has allowed us to support a large variety of hardware and video technologies over these past 12 years, and it continues to allow us to support these systems 10 to 15 years after their initial deployments. When we first started developing with QT 12 years ago, our products utilized multiple display planes to render video and graphics. One plane was used to render the GUI graphics and the other planes were used to render one or two video sources. Uh, the planes would then be composited together using a color key to determine how to merge the planes together. To allow our interactive GUIs to control this process using QT was relatively simple. It was a matter of creating some QT and QML classes and, and elements that were able to interface with the media DSPs and display processing hardware to create and configure video planes. Uh, the final step for the displaying for displaying uh, video and graphics was done in hardware where the multiple uh, planes were composited together. This method was for rendering video and graphics was used in our systems for, for quite a while. Around 2012, new graphics capabilities in our hardware allowed us to do real-time video manipulations. We were able to render video directly to a graphics texture. This allowed us to manipulate the video just like any other graphic element. We were able to add blurs, have smooth animated video resizing or repositionings, all kinds of great eye-popping effects. Some of you may recognize this as one used in the QT multimedia module. However, at the time we were developing this, the multimedia module was still under development. So we had to implement custom QT QML interfaces to control the process. Fortunately for us, the development of these interfaces was made considerably easier using QT's excellent OpenGL support. And even though at the lower levels we were making OpenGL calls, the interactive GUI developers still had a simple QML interface to control and manipulate video. Eventually we did switch to the QT multimedia module, which Tuan will cover next. Thank you, Ray. On our newer systems, we started using the QT multimedia module to implement a video playback GUI about two years ago with QT 5.12 on Android 7 and 8. In our experience, video playback and QT widgets work seamlessly together. Looking at the QT multimedia design, we can see that 
Qt relies on Android surface texture component to capture video texture and render that as part of the Qt rendering thread. We only had to make minor changes to support our custom Panasonic video UI and subtitle. This is a screenshot of a non-HDR video. And recently our customers are asking for 4K videos. And at Panasonic, we did, would be delighted to deliver the highest quality videos to our passengers. The problem is that 4K HDR content comes with Winevine L1 protection. When we play HDR video using Qt Multimedia Module, Qt widgets are shown here, but the video is blank. So how do we add support for Wi-Fi video? In this slide, we look at how we can implement HDR playback on Android. We decided to use ExoPlayer, which is an open source project from Google that facilitate video streaming and metadata extraction. HDR track data is sent to the HEVC decoder and video data is decoded and tunneled directly to the surface view. This is all done at the hardware layer. This is why surface texture that is used by the Qt Multimedia module can receive video frame. Now, let's look at how we can add HDR support in Qt. We have a use case where we need to display a media player control overlay on top of the video. That means we need to put Qt rendering surface to be on top of the video and transparent. Next, we need to add a new Android media module with HDR player class that has an instance of Excel player. Lastly, we need to create a custom QML plugin to control our HDR media player. This design is to add HDR support as an add-on. Qt Multimedia Module should continue to work for non-HDR video. In our original prototype, we changed the Multimedia Module backend to use Surface View directly. We have more code reuse, but it would break our existing applications that do not need HDR support. We have some code snippets for adding HDR surface view to the Qt main layout. And for making Android surface view to be on top and transparent. And this is done in Qt activity delegate class. Once we are done with making Qt plugin changes, we have to make the corresponding changes in QML. Our first challenge is for the HDR surface view component. The geometry of the video area must be specified in pixels. Anchors do not work since video surface view is in Android coordinate space. Our second challenge is that when video is playing, the topmost element needs to be transparent and no widgets can cover the video display area. As you can imagine with this solution, Qt ability of managing UI components is limited. Due to the transparent background, GUI developers must be aware of the visibility of each UI layer. To address this issue, Qt Creator has a feature to run the app in 3D model, as seen here, which should help us identify which layers to hide. By doing all these things, we managed to modify our existing Qt application to play both HDR and non-HDR video. On behalf of Panasonic Avionics, I'd like to thank everybody for joining our presentation, and I hope everybody has a great time at the Qt World Summit. Stay safe, and thank you.